One of the most common questions I get asked is, you know, how do I start day trading? So what me and my mentor Bao did for our viewers on YouTube is create a free mentorship course that reveals our 12 secrets that every single brand new day trader should know before they get started. But please take note that there is limited seating every single week. So please reserve your spot at myinvestingclub.co. The link is in the description. What's up guys, it's Harry Haas here. And today I'm just gonna be going over a video, self-sabotage, how I built better habits and how I got better. Um, you know, this is a big one for me because, um, you know, along the way when I first started, you know, I didn't really know how to study. I didn't really know how to get better. Um, so yeah, if you're kind of struggling with that, this is definitely a good video for you. Um, so I know that the slow market was hard. I know April was a hard month for most. It was a lot of grind, a lot of chop. I guess how I kind of dealt with it is that I kind of almost like took some time off. Um, I was sleeping in. Um, I wasn't worried about missing opportunities. I was really just, you know, really worried about just being consistent every single day. I wanted to show up every single day, but I wasn't going to be itching, looking for a trade. I was going to go slow. I was going to be methodical. I was going to be patient. And I was really going to nail the setups that I knew were going to work for me. And if there was nothing on the day, I had to be really honest with myself. And I had to say, okay, there's nothing here today for me. I need to walk away. I'm not going to gamble every day. I'm not going to be a degenerate every day. This isn't the casino. This isn't Vegas. I'm going to treat this like a business. I'm going to keep moving forward. And that's exactly what I did. Um, so I thought I would just kind of, you know, start talking about kind of the middle and the beginning of my journey, because in the middle and the beginning of my journey, there was a lot of struggle, there was a lot of loss. But what kept me going, you know, and I think the thing that kept me going the most was I was seeing other consistently profitable traders, you know, just living and enjoying their life and saying, Hey, listen, I sacrificed for a couple years, but now I'm enjoying kind of the fruits of my labor. You know, I looked at people like Alex, I looked at people like Bao, um, you know, I saw tons of people on Twitter and stuff like that who were profitable and who were kind of living well. And that was what just kind of kept me going. I said, this is my goal. This is what I want to do. This is who I want to be. This is really the person who I want to become. And then I needed to kind of put in the work and take steps in order to get me to the, to the next place and keep me moving in the right direction. But after a while, I think after like a year or so, you know, you just run out of motivation. You know, it's the same grind every single day. I'm going to get up. I'm going to, I'm going to work. I'm going to keep trying to get better. Um, I'm going to keep doing my thing. And after a while, I found that I just couldn't run on motivation anymore. It, it was hard. It was painful. Losing every day sucks. Um, you know, not turning into the person that you want to become quick enough sucks. Um, you know, you really have to delay that instant gratification in order to get yourself to the next level and in order to really reach your goals and reach your, your true potential. Because I really believe that, you know, you, you don't need to be the smartest. You don't need to be a, a PhD. You don't need to be a doctor. But what you do need is just, you know, consistent work. You need the ability to, to work smart. You need the ability to kind of just really keep showing up and keep taking those losses because you know that, you know, slowly but surely, you're going to slowly get better and better and better. You know, um, for example, you know, if you're trying to learn how to play golf, you know, maybe you're, you're 20 or 30, you don't know how to play golf. The first time you go out on the golf course, you know, you're not going to know how to swing a ball. But if you take some lessons from the pros, if you keep showing up every single day, you know, I guarantee by, that by the end of the summer or by the end of the year, you're going to be a better golfer. And it's really the same thing as this, right? I also found that I needed to take control of myself. And what does that mean? Um, you know, I had to really be hard on myself and say, okay, you can't go out with the boys tonight. You can't go out and party tonight. You really need to, um, in my opinion, just crack down on yourself. You need to, to treat it like you're in university. You need to treat it like it is a second job. And you really need to kind of, again, take control of yourself and really be hard on yourself and really be disciplined on yourself. And if you can't do that, I really believe that you just don't want it bad enough. Um, so for me, for instance, and you know, I'm just, I'm not going to rant about, um, you know, other people trying to get better, you know, I needed better habits myself. You know, I found a little bit of success and I started drinking, I started partying. Um, and that really doesn't put you in a good place. Like, I really believe that if you get a little bit of success, you know, and you start drinking, you start partying, it's very, very easy to lose sight of your main target and your main goal. You know, let's say you start making 300, 400, 500 to a grand a day and you start drinking and partying, you know, very quickly that can be taken away from you and very quickly the market can humble you. So you really need to, uh, you know, create a schedule and say, okay, 
you know, going out and partying is okay. You know, I think it's, it's, it's frowned upon all the time. I read people on Twitter. They're like, if you're not partying right now, or if you're partying right now and you're not working, like I'm better than you. You know, I, I, I really do believe that like, um, you know, going out, drinking and partying, that's okay. All in moderation. But if you start going out every single night, and, you, and it becomes a problem and it starts interfering with your work and it starts interfering with your trading, you know, then you really need to take a step back and look at yourself and say, hey, um, this is obviously an issue that I need to fix in order to get better and in order to take myself to the next level. You know, if you're a six figure trader and you want to become a seven figure trader, well, drinking and partying every single night is not going to get you in that right direction. You know, if you're a four figure trader or a five figure trader, and you're just getting started, you know, in order to get up to those numbers, drinking and partying every single night is not the thing that is going to get you there. Trust me. You know, so what did, what did I have to do? I created a schedule that fit myself. You know, when I, when I was partying in university, I needed to create a schedule because when I was in university, I had two things on the go. I had school on the go and I had um, trading on the go. That was what I was trying to work towards. And both of those are full-time jobs. And both of those things, um, you know, are something that need to be treated like a job and are something that do require a lot of work. So I had to create a schedule, you know, in the morning, for instance, I would wake up at 6 a.m. in the morning I would go over the market, I would read the tape, I would chart, I would do all my work. Then after the market closed, all my classes were scheduled so that in the afternoon I could do all my classes because, you know, at the start of the year I said, hey, I need to trade. I need to be the first person to pick all my classes so that in the afternoon I can do my classes till night, do my homework at night, and then repeat and do it all over again. And some people said at the end of second year, yo, we didn't really see you a lot. And it was because I was just working, uh, you know. I wanted to kind of get to the point where I could drop out. I wanted to get to the point where I was making enough money, so I didn't really need to worry as much. Hey guys, my name is Toss Bradley. I'm one of the head mentors and monitors at My Investing Club. If you have any questions about getting started in trading, getting started in MIC, MIC in general, text me at 213-458-5997. This is not a robot. It is me directly on the other end of my business line, and uh, we'll get you in the club. We also have special promotions going on that I can get to you depending on your trading needs. Hit me up. Back to the video. And that's exactly what I did. Um, I just, I really spent time just working and working and working and getting better and better and better so I could put myself in a position where I could drop out and I could just solely focus on trading. Um, another thing is I needed to manage my relationships a bit better. You know, I found that what was happening is that, you know, it was very easy for me to, I guess, um, fall out the wagon a little bit, right? With either friends or, you know, own family relations. It's very, very easy when you just put your head down and work towards something that you can start kind of losing sight of other relationships. So I think I needed to manage my relationships better as well. And another thing is that I needed to manage my mental health better. I needed to take more time for me. I needed to, instead of just drinking all the time and partying all the time, you know, which is how I kind of dealt with stress and a lot of things like that. I needed to find better activities. I needed to go to the gym more. I needed to work out more. Um, I needed to just go for a run or just take a break and just spend some time alone with myself and read a book or something and just do something completely different because I really do believe that that can help you a lot. So this is roughly kind of how I studied and what I studied. This is a question I get a lot. Um, so I guess studying the chart, drawing lines, everything like that, 20%. Price action work, 40%. This is on demand. This is watching my own screen recordings. This is going over the gameplay every single day. That took up around 40%. Um, you know, it, it really just came down to, I loved absor observing things and I loved watching how things moved. And for me, um, you know, this really did end up taking 40% of my time. Now in the green, we're group projects with tabs. You know, it's very, very easy to isolate yourself and say, I'm going to do it all alone. But that really didn't help me. Um, in the beginning, before MIC, I had a little discord chat, the bear was in it. Um, and we worked on group projects, right? Um, all of us kind of took a turn, all of us kind of did our own little things. And then we kind of presented it to the group and said, Hey, um, this is kind of what we found. This is our kind of thesis. And so that took up 20% of my time. Um, in the purple, studying my trades and going over my trading journal, that was something that I did a lot. Um, you know, I mean, these could easily both be, uh, you know, 40%. I just put the 40% to price action work because I really found that that was what I found myself doing 40% of the time. The other 20 was, you know, again, um, 
just just really just me kind of I guess just 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 going over my trades, studying my trades, going over the journal. That's really what I did. Um, you know, I found that that helped me a lot. And, you know, I think that having a journal and writing everything down every single day is very, very important, right? Um, you know, you want to get to a point where every single day, if you see something different, or maybe, maybe you went long a breakout and you got stuffed into it, write that down. Say, hey, I went long into a breakout. It didn't really work. I got stuffed on. And for the next time you see that scenario, maybe you go short or maybe you just avoid the setup altogether, right? Don't keep making the same mistakes over and over and over again. Keep a detailed journal every single day of every little detail that happens to you. Because then at the end of the day, you can say, aha, I forgot about that. I can go over this now and I can keep getting better and better and better. And that's something that you can do every single day. Keeping a journal is very, very easy. If you have a notepad, a pen and paper beside you, that can help you a lot. So some tips to kind of help with study. Um, a study prep is good. Um, you know, this is just something that I kind of did for me. Um, I kind of laid out a lesson plan for myself of what I wanted to achieve and what I wanted to go over in the session. I mean, for me, um, I'm someone who likes to be very organized. I'm someone who likes to uh, know what I'm going to do, know what I want to accomplish, have a little goal that I can tackle. Because if you have a little goal that you can tackle, it's almost like a brain hack for me. If you say, hey, I want to watch 30 minutes of this particular action and I want to get this, this, this and this out of it, or I want to do this much of a, a little, a little, you know, I want to, I want to go over this much of my journal, or I want to go over this much of this, or this, this much of that, or I want to achieve this much in a little group project that I'm working on, that can help you a lot. Um, you know, and you need to remember, like, you are your own boss in this situation. There is no one coming to help you, right? If, you, if your boss caught you on TikTok for an hour, every single day, you'd be fired. So you need to remember that, you know, you are your own boss. So for that hour or two or three that you're working, you know, don't be on your phone, eliminate all your distractions and really just pay attention, you know, stick to your own schedule as well. I understand a lot of people do have kids. A lot of people do have family responsibilities. That's okay. You know, you can always schedule around. There's always a little bit of time that you can kind of find to get back and do what you want and achieve the goals that you want to do, right? Everyone's schedule is going to be different. Some people may work a night shift and then they trade and then they sleep. Um, again, for those types of schedules, I'm sure you can find a little bit of room where you can just get a little bit of, you know, things done. Because if you put 30 extra minutes a day more than the next guy, you will come out 30 extra minutes a day um, ahead and on top of that other person, right? And, you know, again, everyone's competing with each other. Um, you know, you're competing against yourself, but at the end of the day, you know, if 90% of people are short and you're long and you're squeezing them, you know, you're competing against all those people, right? You want to lag on top of all those other people. So you really, really, really need to just keep putting in the work, keep your head down, ignore the noise and just keep going, you know? And another thing is stop comparing yourself to others, right? It's okay to use other people as motivation. It's okay to say, wow, Bao lives in a really nice place. Bao has a Ferrari that I'm motivated to be like Bao. But if Bao's making 4K every single day and you're like, wow, I'm only at 200, I want to be making 4K like Bao, and you start getting in that toxic kind of comparison, that's where it kind of can become a problem. And you can start over trading, trying to reach those P&L goals, getting away from those kind of process goals. Those are, you know, that's not what you want to do. You want to just be focusing on the process every single day, focusing on your own self, focusing on your own work, work ethic, just to keep getting better and better and better. And I think that that is something that can help you, you know, you know, really a lot. So along the way, you know, it's easy to start cutting people off along the way. You know, it's easy to start cutting others off and, and where you just want to be alone and you just want to focus on your goal. And that's something that everyone can fall in the trap of, right? You can fall in that trap of coming home from work and just working and working and working, going to bed and just repeating it and just, you know, slowly cutting people off. And, you know, I've been there, you know. I've been there where it's just every single day, you know, you just kind of stop talking to people and people are like, oh, how are you doing? Like you kind of like stop talking to everyone, but you know, you just kind of fall in that trap of working on things. And I, I honestly believe like this is something that I kind of did where I kind of like fell into that trap, I guess, where, you know, I was like, I'm just going to focus on work. I'm not going to go out. I'm not going to party. And it did end up working for me, but I'm sure that there is an alternative way where you can balance everything. I mean, for me, I'm just kind of like an all in or I'm all out kind of type of guy, right? 
And so if I'm all into something, there's nothing that's going to get in my way. I'm going to keep working and working and working and working and working and being persistent until I achieve that goal. I'm sure there is a way to be balanced. It's just with my personality, I can't. So I think that, you know, it is easy along the way to start cutting people's off or cutting other people off and just kind of getting in that kind of perspective. So you, you always want to just Thank you so much for watching our video. If you want to see more of our videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the button here. We do our best to post a new video every single day. If you have any questions about MIC or any general trading questions, please text Tosh using the number here. Also, stay up to date by watching some of our most recent videos right over here.